Our thoughts on an exciting Saturday in college football. Can Tech hold their ground if Mahomes misses an extended period of time? What does Tom Brady's return mean for the rest of the NFL? And who are we picking in this weekend's biggest games? Find out next. MCTV Sports 101 starts now. Hey there, sports fans, and welcome to MCTV Sports 101. I'm Kyle Stafford. And I'm Billy Engel. This past weekend produced many exciting games throughout college football. Three top ten matchups highlighted the weekend, but those games weren't the only ones that generated some fireworks. Multiple games came down to the wire showing us just how important it is to play the entire 60 minutes. Billy, which game stood out to you this past weekend? Well, looking at all the, all the matchups that took place this weekend, I got eight that stood out to me. <laughs> Washington, Stanford, Clemson, Louisville, Michigan, Wisconsin, Tennessee, Georgia, North Carolina, Florida State, Baylor, Iowa State, OU and TCU, and OSU and Texas. Yeah. All of these games were great games. All of them came down with surprising finishes. But uh, I want to attack one here that stood out to me, and it was the Washington and Stanford oh, game. Oh, yeah, definitely. The only one, I think, out of these ones that wasn't close, but, oh. man, was it unexpected. 40-6, to six, I believe, was the final. 44-6. 44 to six. Six. And, golly, man, you, the, Wa the Washington Huskies had control of that game from beginning to end. You know, McCaffrey couldn't get going. Yeah. The stand the, the whole Stanford program just looked discombobulated well, and had no clue what to do. Do you think Stanford is actually was overrated in that game? Do you think they were ranked too high? I think they were ranked a little bit too high, and also I think the Washington Huskies were a little bit underrated, yeah. underrated at the time. I think a lot of people didn't know about Washington. I think they play so late on the, on the West Coast that mm. people didn't really know a lot. But Jake Browning is a kid to keep your eye on. He's a great quarterback, great game manager. And that defense, that defense is solid out there in Washington. They got something special going out there. Yeah, they do. And it's a young program, too, and that's a good thing about yeah. it. Now, another one, let's go to, uh, out to Death Valley, Clemson and Louisville. <laughs> Golly, man. And, one and, yard. <laughs> one yard. All you got to get is one yard. You know, it's just I, apparently these players in football today have a problem with running out of bounds. <laughs> but, you know, it was a great game, you know, exciting from end to finish. Uh, Deshaun Watson played marvelously. Uh, Lamar Jackson played excellent as well, and that, that, that's why you like to watch college football games like this. Yeah, and I don't, I don't think the loss actually hurt Lamar Jackson's Heisman chances. I think he actually outperformed Deshaun Watson in that game. I do too. De Deshaun Watson still had three interceptions, so they could have came back. But I give a lot of credit. Louisville looked done in the first half, and I really thought that Clemson was going to run away. But a great job by Lamar Jackson to come back in that one. But, I mean, still, the coaches, I don't know if that was the player just thought he had the first. It looked like to me he thought he had the first and down. That's what it looked like. And I feel like that to me that's something with coaching. you got to know. You got to tell your players where they're supposed to be. they got to know where the first down marker is. And that was something he, he could have had that. Yeah. I mean, I thought he could have had it. But real quick, I just want to go to UNC and Florida State. <laughs> that was a great finish. That snapped a 22-game home winning streak for the Florida State. And the kicker, what? A kick at the end of Golly, that one, right there. No one saw that one. Oh, coming. it was just well, a great. What finish. was that at the end there? What was the the, the tomahawk shot oh, as he ran down the what, field? Fifty yards down the field, Nick Weiler. That is the kicker. Great job, great finish. He had missed a fifty yard earlier in the game too. Yeah. So it was a great job. UNC back to back close finishes. Sticking with college football, last Thursday the Texas Tech Red Raiders opened up conference play with a 55-19 win over the Kansas Jayhawks. But the win came at a cost as star quarterback Patrick Mahomes left the game with an AC joint sprain in his throwing shoulder. It is unclear when Mahomes will be able to return as the team won't provide much information on the injury. Kyle, if Mahomes misses an extended period of time, what does that mean for Tech? I think, I think it could be trouble. And this is my problem because Tech is struggling to win games with them. <laughs> yeah. So you taking taking that talent of a player out. I think Texas Tech will struggle. Nick Shimanick did a good job in relief, mm -hmm. but they're playing Kansas State this weekend. That's the best defense in the Big 12 because we all know there's no defense in the Big 12 this year. <laughs> of course. But Kansas State did a good job. They held West Virginia at 17, I believe, on the road last mm -hmm. week. So it could be tough. Bill Snyder's a great coach. Nick Shimanick could have proved me wrong. He could be out there and be a good game manager. He does have good weapons, and, but no running game still. Uh, and see what I think. I think he, what Nick what Nick Shermanick can do is, is he can keep the, the, the boat afloat. Yeah. He can keep us going, but he is not going to be able to get us a Big 12 title no. this year. And we're going to need Pat Mahomes to get back as quickly as possible to get these by tough wins. By the next week, I mean, because you're playing West Virginia next week, so you're really getting the heart of your schedule. Exactly. And as soon as we get into that gauntlet of the Big 12, well, I mean, well, what is the gauntlet of the Big 12? And <laughs> yeah. the 
Oklahoma, the, the Texas, the right Baylor, now. the TCUs. Yeah. And so it, with, without Mahomes moving forward, I don't think we really got a shot at any Big 12 title. And really, you know, it possibly even can drop us out of a bowl game if he misses an well, extended period of time. I'm going to be honest with you, even with Mahomes, I don't know if we got enough to go because I just I haven't seen enough on our defense. Yes, they had a good game against Kansas. They also held Kansas to 20 points last year too. Mm -hmm. So I'm not getting too hyped up about that. We'll see what happens this weekend at Kansas State. But, you know, the running game still only 48 yards was the leading rusher again. And I'm going to go back to that. Without a running game, this offense will struggle mm -hmm. even, even if they have Mahomes. And the offense was actually really struggling, I thought, before Mahomes got hurt. I thought Mahomes was kind of off a little bit. But it, without Mahomes, I mean, no matter what Nick Shimon can do in that game, it's just not the same. He doesn't bring the same type of presence Mahomes does. Mahomes mm -hmm. can make something out of nothing. Now, I don't know a lot about Nick Shimon. Maybe he proves me wrong, and I hope he does. But I think right now, if Mahomes misses more than two weeks, I think it's going to be some trouble. I agree. Well, he's back. In the NFL, Tom Brady will make his much-anticipated return to the gridiron this Sunday against the Cleveland Browns. Brady will be fresh off serving his four-game suspension for Deflategate and will be coming back to a team that held their own without him going 3-1. and one. Billy, what are you expecting out of Brady and his return? I'm expecting what <laughs> Brady always does. Yeah. He comes in, you know, I just want to go back to last year. At 38 years old, the man throws for 4,700 yards, <laughs> 36 TDs, and only seven interceptions. And, I mean, yeah, I Don't guess miss a beat. It, this Don't guy's miss like a beat. wine. He's only getting better with age. <laughs> That's true. And, you know, it's just great. I, I expect him to come in. I expect him to dominate. or I expect him to ease into the game, although his opponent is <laughs> – they're out uh, – the Cleveland Browns, they're out for something uh, definitely more than they can handle, well, I think. But, you know, they got a healthy Rob Gronkowski yeah. getting back into it. Uh, another Martellus Bennett mm -hmm. on the other side in the tight end, getting that double tight end game going. So I, I'm expecting big things. Well, God help the Cleveland Browns because <laughs> they're going to get slaughtered this week. And yeah. I think I don't think it's going to be close. They've played a lot of close games, mm -hmm. but I feel really bad because this is a bad game for the Cleveland Browns yeah. because you're already 0-4, and, and now you're talking about coming back against one of the best players, maybe the best player in yeah. football And not right to now. mention a, ra a great defense yeah. that these Patriots got. And, you know, I just think he's going to go off. He's going to try and prove something to the NFL. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised that the NFL has extra security around the footballs before mm. the game. That could be a thing before, you know, Roger Goodell might be there in person. Yeah. But I, I think it's going to be big. I think he's going to have a massive year. That mm. offense is stacked. Julian Edelman, he's healthy this year. Remember last year he kind of fought some injuries. Yeah. So I think with him, Danny Amendola has played well. And we all know, I mean, if something happened to Tom Brady, they got some good backups as well. They do. But like you talked about, that defense is extremely good. And their schedule, you know, they lost to the Bills, but yeah. it's one game. And wait, and I feel they, bad for the Bills he, now, too. They're talking mess and wait till, uh, wait till they go back yeah, there. Yeah, they'll be playing again. And, you know, Brissett, he had the thumb injury. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot that goes into with that. that Let's not like forget about 16 the, points, at least. So. Yeah, I mean, the defense still played well. Yeah. So it's nothing that I don't think the Patriots can't handle. Yeah, it's, it's the NFL better be on notice. It's Tom Brady time. <laughs> Well, now it's time for our weekly segment called Who You Got. So, Billy, we're tied now, 7-6. and six. Mm -hmm. I came back last week. I, I had some good picks. I didn't have the best picks. week. I didn't yeah. have the best week. It's all right. I've been there before, but, you know, Washington really helped me out. They set a tone early, and then I, I got going after that. Yeah, I got upset with that Stanford-Washington game, too. <laughs> blown out. Yeah. Well, let's see how we do this week. So, tonight, the New York Mets host the San Francisco Giants, and they know a wild card game. Billy, who you got in that one? Got the San Francisco Giants. It's an even year. Madison Bumgarner on the mound. That's what I like. Yeah, two words. Madison Bumgarner. That's that, it. You know, a lot of respect to, to Noah Syndergaard. I mm -hmm. believe I was wrong. I think I said he was out a couple weeks ago. <laughs> it was Jacob DeGrom that will be missing from the New York Mets. Errors. But it doesn't matter. Madison yeah. Bumgarner on the mound. Playoffs. It's, it's over. San Francisco Giants. It's an even year. It's going to yeah. be dangerous. On Saturday, Texas and Oklahoma clash in the Red River, Red River rivalry. Kyle, who you got? I'm going to go with Oklahoma. I, don't, I, I mean, Texas, they really dropped off in the defense, I mean, all year, uh, just like everybody else in the Big 12. Mm -hmm. But Oklahoma's offense came back to life last week. I think Mayfield kind of found a rhythm. So I expect Oklahoma to pull it out. Yeah, I do as well. I think that Oklahoma's finally starting to get some traction on this season, mm -hmm. finally getting some pace with their offense moving, their defense starting to pick up a little bit better. Texas is almost, I feel, going the opposite, yeah. as in regressing. Their offense is starting to get figured out with that dual system quarterback that they're going. So, you know, and their defense is just getting torn up every week. Secondary. Yeah. They got torched last week. Exactly. So, you know, I, I'm going to go with OU as well. 
USC plays host to the surprising 4-1 Colorado Buffaloes. Billy, who you got? I got USC. You know, I think that they finally, this game, uh, it gives them something a little bit more to play for. Yeah. You know, their season's kind of been up in the air, so I think this one, that they'll be able to pull it out. Well, I'm going to go with the under. I'm going to go with Colorado. They're okay, ranked for okay. the first time since 2005. <laughs> I don't think they've been relevant since 2005. So I'm going to go with Colorado. I think they got a good squad out, uh, over there in Colorado, so... They haven't went on the road at Oregon already. Mm -hmm. I know Oregon's down this year, but I think they'll pull it out against USC. Yeah. The showdown of the weekend takes place in College Station as unbeaten's Tennessee and Texas A&M clash. Kyle, who you got? Well, Billy, you know me. <laughs> uh, a lot of people that know me, I'm not a Texas A&M person, so it pains me to say this, but I'm going to go with the Aggies. I think that they're the best team in this one. Tennessee, they just haven't still impressed me. I know the Hail Mary pass was great, but they have not impressed me as, an, as a complete team and one full game this year. I'm going to go with the Aggies. I'm, I'm going to go with the Aggies as well. Trevor Knight's been playing mm -hmm. well this year. Uh, he's found a way to accumulate into that offense. And like you said, Tennessee just hasn't done anything that's been that impressive. Yeah. They're squeaking out these wins. And, you know, by all means, a win's a win. But, you know, whenever it comes down to playing some good opponents, we'll figure out what, you know, yeah. how good are those those wins really well, are. Well, and Tennessee's got to look ahead to Alabama, too, next week, so that could play in a part of that game. Mm -hmm. In the NFL, Denver hosts Atlanta. Billy, who are you going with? I'm going to go with Atlanta. You know, What's they played Carolina this last weekend. They played amazing. Matt Ryan's starting to look like the Matt Ryan of old, and I, I like what Atlanta's doing, and Denver's got to lose sometime. That's <laughs> all I'm saying. Well, Trevor Simeon left the game with an injury, but he should start in that one, so I'm going to go with Denver. I think their defense is just too good. Simeon's got a rhythm in that offense. Uh, Atlanta, what they did with Julio Jones last week, that was Ooh, amazing. But uh, I hate to tell you, this is this is not the same defense that you're going to face this week. So right. I'm going to go with Denver. They're the best defense. Denver's got to lose eventually. Hey, they got to lose. Them in Minnesota, they figure out how to win with defense, ah, and that's it. Defense so, wins championships. There's does. an old saying, I think. Yeah. Well, real quick before we get out of here, Billy, I just want to talk a little bit about Ben Simmons, the number one overall pick for the Philadelphia 76ers. I'm going to sound smart here. I'm going to go, he had surgery on an acute Jones fracture in his foot, which is the fifth metatarsal, which is the outside bone of your foot. Mm -hmm. Now, according to medical professionals, this is a six to eight week time period, time period that he could miss. The team hasn't released a timetable, but six to eight weeks, you're talking about maybe the first you know, quarter of the season. So, I mean, how do you, how do you think 76ers were fair? Well, I, I just feel bad for the 76ers. Yeah. You know, they just can't catch a break. You know, they're getting these high draft picks year in and year out. And, you know, they're just consistently not playing. Finding Joel way, you, you know, Miller, find, Noel. Exactly. They're finding ways to get injured. And, you know, the, I, 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 just, I just find it saddening. They're really trying to rebuild this franchise, mm -hmm. and they just they really can't get off to a good foot. So I hope Ben Simmons a speedy recovery. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> so uh, I hope uh, Ben Simmons to a speedy recovery, and yeah. I hope that he can get the 76ers back, 76ers back off yeah. on the right track. Well, I mean, if it's only six to eight weeks, that's not too bad. It's just a little bit of the season. You know, he just I don't gets behind yeah, I mean, offense. you don't expect them to be competitive this year, mm -hmm. but they did get Joel Embiid back, so that's good for them. He played his first NBA game last night. So they're still kind of going in the right direction direction but I think they have some things to work out too many centers right now I know Ben Simmons 6'10 he is a big guy you got to watch out for those foot injuries as well with centers oh, yeah. uh, or, or 6'10 I keep wanting to say he's a center but you know he's going to be a point guard or, or somewhere like that for yeah. him so it's tough I hope that he comes back and I hope that he can help turn around Philadelphia I'd like to see Philadelphia get back uh, you know to contention east especially because the east is, is very poor right <laughs> yeah now, so they need some more contenders yeah. Well, that's our show for this week's edition of MC TV Sports 101. Join us next week for the latest big name stories in sports. I'm Kyle Stafford. And I'm Billy Engel. Until next time.